today I'm going to show you how I made this piece. First I use what is called a filbert brush. The filbert has kind of a rounded tip and the bristles on this one are a little bushy. The first thing I do is just paint brush the tag. Oh and I'm using acrylic paint. Now what you want to pay attention to is as you're creating each line you want to look at how the line is being created. You don't want to just like throw the brush around and expect it to come out. You want to look at where the line's going and how the relationship to each other line is building as you're going because you want to keep the spacing going in a balanced way. The way to learn precision control with anything doing it fast is by doing it slowly many times and observing yourself as you're doing it slowly. Now that I've got the basic structure down, I'm adding a little bit of thickness to certain parts. I'm making certain parts of the letters more defined, a little wider, adding a little detail here, a little connector piece. You can do this as much as you want, you can add as many details as you want, you can shape it however you want. This is just a basic idea. You can actually sculpt this into a whole different thing by just adding more and more little bits and pieces around the edges or little flares and stuff. The main thing I'm trying to show you here overall is that you can create stylized letters without having to sketch them out with a pencil, sketch out every bit and piece of it but just do a straight up tag with a paintbrush and then outline it. Now the next thing you can do is add the outline. I'm using an acrylic paint marker. Don't use oil based paint markers. Make sure it's acrylic because if you use oil and then you add acrylic on top of that later, it's not going to stick well. It's just not going to work right. I just suggest you don't use oil based paint markers. Now, ideally, you might want to do the background color first, which I'm going to do later. Because as you'll see later, when you add the background color, you're going to kind of overlap the edges of this outline, and then you're going to have to redo the outline again. But the reason I do this sometimes is a matter of patience. Uh, I want to kind of see what the piece is looking like already. Sometimes it gives me a little extra inspiration to do other things to it because once you add the outline you really see what it looks like because before the outline it's just like a glob of blue. Remember this is just one approach. I'm kind of just sharing my idea, my process as it's going along for this specific piece. This is not the way to do it. You can take bits and pieces of what makes sense to you out of this and use it on your own however you want to. about mistakes because you will fix those up with the blue paint later. You will cut things down, shave up the outline, basically sculpt it back out. Another thing you're going to have to learn to do is, as you're seeing, I'm keeping my hand off of the surface as I'm painting because of course the lines aren't drying right away and if I were to put my hand against the board to make my hand steadier it's gonna smudge around the outline paint or whatever paint is still drying and you'll learn a different sort of control by not having your hand resting on something the way that you would doing a pen drawing if your hand's not that steady, don't worry, it will come with time. It might take a long time, but it will happen. You'll get good at it. Now that I've finished the outline, I can take the blue paint with the paintbrush and cut the lines. I'm going to shape them down, fix any imperfections, 
basically sculpt it to my liking. For doing this part where I'm sculpting the edge of the outline, overlapping certain pieces, um, and filling in a lot, I like to. I'm using this brush specifically because it's a smaller piece. See how it's kind of round all the way around? This one's old and worn out a bit. It knew it looks a little pointier. But this way, there's more control going around the corners in a way. See how it kind of just goes like that? Whereas if you're using a flat brush, going around corners is, let's see, there's a different way to handle it. It's just a little different. It feels a little freer to me to have a more bushy kind of paintbrush to fill in large areas. There's definitely use for this though. We'll talk about that in another video. might notice every few moments I pull my hand away that's because of course I have to dip my paintbrush back in the paint to get a little more paint on it and it's funny uh, being used to using paint markers where the paints constantly flowing out it took a little bit of patience to get used to that but you'll see it starts to become second nature and actually part of the fun basic simple ways to add a background is to do a little cloud. I'm still using the paintbrush acrylics right now. And because this uh, board I'm working on is not primed, I'm having to do two, three layers of paint to get it to be as bold as I want. Now another cool thing about using acrylic brush paints and paint markers is as I'm doing here and I'm going to use this really bright yellow to add some color to the middle section of this cloud which wasn't really what I was planning on I thought I was going to do the whole thing but basically I got lazy and as you'll see at the end of this section I did the middle and I did the top and bottom parts quickly so it actually kind of looks like a, uh, a light like there's a glare in the middle a bright part in the middle of the cloud and I say I got lazy jokingly but really it's not lazy it's more so realizing something I was doing or an idea I had wasn't exactly necessary and it could go in another direction and a lot of time these are like what Bob Ross calls a happy accident and you discover something as you're going along it's best not to go with the plan all the way through but let the process guide you that's why I always say it's about the process, not the outcome. Otherwise, it is devoid of life, and it's just all mental, and there's no feeling in it, because you're not present with the process. It's a great practice in letting life help guide you. Considering I've been doing this about 16 years I am kind of making a lot of mistakes just keep in mind I am holding the camera myself as I draw
As I mentioned before, because I chose to do the outline before I did the background color, the yellow, um, the background color had to overlap the outline a little bit. So now it looks like the background is kind of leaking over the foreground a little. It's not to say that that's a bad thing. You might want to leave it that way, but for the sake of making this look bold the way I intended to, I am redoing the outline. highlights. You just have to think that the light's coming in from one side and you paint a white line on the edge of that same side. So I'm painting anywhere there's a right, an edge on the right side, if that makes sense. If it doesn't now, you'll figure it out. Plus it, it doesn't really matter. The white kind of just adds a little bit of a complementary color or contrast really. some basic ideas here as I said just to get you to see that you can create letters with the paintbrush this way you'll actually be able to create different styles without having to try to figure out how to stylize your letters by sketching them out you'll be able to just draw them out outline them sculpt them etc in future videos I'm gonna go through other techniques and processes and basically show you my process to give you more ideas um, it's not that there's my process. I'm always having different processes and kind of like flowing with it and figuring out different things over time as you will um, Just Take this information let whatever soak in soak in on its own and as you're painting you'll see things will make sense things will come through and um, Feel free to ask any questions Remember, I have a ton of other videos. This is the, I think, 18th tutorial. So if you haven't seen the other ones, watch them. There's a lot of information on spray paint techniques, paintbrush techniques, drawing techniques. But more will be to come. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Happy painting. Peace.